Uh, I would say. Uh, that she was. Her thing was kind of slow to get going, but she. Every single time there's a punchline, everybody laughs. So you have to expect between maybe like every three minutes that there'll be a punchline or so. So I would say Macy Isaac was about a 8.6 out of 10. And then we got our headliner, Jono Salai. Um, he did pretty well with the crowd for the most part. I had to cut out for just a little bit, but I can tell that you know, he did pretty well with the crowd. A little bit of crowd work. Um, I think he did say that he was married on stage. So he talked about dating and stuff and marriage. Um, but overall, I would say he did pretty well. I would say he did a 8.7 8 out of 10. So great job from Jono and the rest of the lineup. Um, if you did buy a five dollar ticket at for the comedy show, you sh get a five dollar credit over at the Les Thoughts Coffee Shop next door. I actually ended up getting like this uh, special special um, drink. Like, I think it's like a special latte or something. So special coffee. Uh, Yeah, I think I got something called the Yoruba, the Yoruba Vanilla something. So, it is really good. I'm glad I had it. I want to try a different item at the Las Dots Coffee Place anyway. So, so yeah. Um, uh, Jonas Salai, I want to say, yeah, 8.7. Macy Isaacs, 8.6. Kimball Zoom, Melissa Wiseman, 8.5, 8.5. Uh, Rachel Lloyd, let's say 8. 8.4. Um, uh, Victor Paz, uh, I would say it was about an 8. Was it 8.3? Um, Pedro Young, 8.3. There was another woman on the show, she had glasses on, but uh, she did it right. She was about an 8 out of 10. She talked about her husband, I think. Mm. So, those are all the comedy shows I wanted to talk about on this episode. Um, there's probably going to be a second part to this episode. It'll be mostly about sports, maybe food. So, stay tuned for that. Um, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Thank you for subscribing, listening, donating to the podcast. And if uh, you want to donate to the podcast, there is a link on my YouTube that takes you to the Spotify episode and any uh, Spotify episode. And inside the Spotify episode, there is a link you can make a donation towards the podcast. Anything is appreciated, guys. And remember to spread the word. That's a lot of comedy shows, guys. I'm kind of exhausted. Anywho, but stay tuned for something um, more sports on the second part of this episode. So remember to have some good food, good comedy, watch some good sports, good action, and uh, see some good comedy shows. And you know the saying goes, boom, Tiggy Maximus, signing off on part one, episode 178. Baby. All right, there we go. So, welcome to part two of episode 178 of the Tiki Maximus Talks on YouTube. On this up, this half of the episode, I'm going to be talking about the Tyson Fury Usyk undisputed heavyweight championship match in boxing, UFC 302. Um, a little bit of NBA playoffs, NBA Finals, Stanley Cup Final, um, Padres Baseball. Let's quickly get into this part. So, Usyk versus 
Tyson Fury. They have all the heavyweight championship belts. They needed to unify and have an undisputed champion. That was a great fight. Both were able to display their strengths. Um, Fury with his powerful punches. Usyk with his high volume of punches. It was pretty much everything you would expect in a heavyweight undisputed championship bout. And early on, uh, Tyson Fury did get to establish his power in his punches. Usyk didn't like it too much. Um, but as much as I saw Tyson Fury was grabbing Usyk quite a few times, there was even one where he was like maybe three feet away from Usyk and he still grabbed him anyway. So that was interesting. And um, after which point, um, I, I did notice that Usyk was starting to find his rhythm and started to get into the defense of Tyson Fury. And in the ninth round, actually, I got to witness something really incredible. Usyk had like this um uh this long sequence of combos that pretty much got Tyson Fury wobbly wobbly across the ring touching three sides of the ring bouncing off the ropes I think on three of the four sides of the ring and it almost seems that with every single blow the last one almost, almost um, knocked out Tyson Fury out of the ring, almost. But the ring, the ring ropes actually did save him from falling out. But because of how he landed against the ropes, the referee decides to call it a knockdown. So you get deducted a point. But Tyson Fury did collect himself and he did kind of score a few more rounds before the fight was over. So it brought to a decision which was a split decision victory for Usyk. And Usyk becomes your undisputed heavyweight champion in boxing. Um, they're going to do a rematch which is... Um, very justified because they're going to fight again December 21st right before the end of 2024 right in back make sure it was on the fluke and um, hopefully hopefully Usyk retains and uh, keep his belts for as long as he can fight any mandatory challengers as needed but that might have been his last big money fight so, but overall, that was a really great fight to watch. Got to see a Devin Busters. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of nice seeing um, Usyk finally get into Tyson Fury, make him pay in the fight, and uh, almost finished off uh, Tyson Fury. So. Um, um, next we have UFC 302 that card had some kind of mixed feelings about it but at least the last fight the main event ended up with a finish which kind of made up for um some questionable decisions, somewhat boring fights, and the submission victory finish was a nice way to kind of end the night. Um, Islam Makachev defended his lightweight championship, the 155 pound championship title, against title challenger once again, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Um, I did notice that um, um, Islam did get 
uh, Dustapore down to the mat. And as long as he kept him down, which is quite a few times for a long time. But, um, but what's great is that, uh, um, Uh, Dustin Poirier was able to escape a few of those takedowns and um, Going into the fifth round I believe uh, Two of the judges did have the scores like I believe it was 39-37 While the third judge I believe had it tied so in the fifth round, um, Islam made sure there was no no doubt and was able to leg whip, um, leg swing um, Dustin Poirier and that toe pick uh, leg swing ends up leading to the finish. Not only did he swing the leg of Desapore to make him off balance, face down on the mat, trying to collect himself, and Islam then grabs uh, Desapore and starts the sequence to do the Darth choke while pinning back one of Dustin's legs. And if you look at Desapore, he looks like a pretzel. And he finally tapped out shortly after. And Islam Makachev is still your lightweight, um, your lightweight champion. So, I would say Dustin Poirier may have had the best challenge to date of Islam Makachev. Um, but Dustin Poirier came up short again. So close. So, um, Islam Makachev did to say that he would like to earn and win a second championship belt. He could go after Ilya Taporia for his 145 pound championship, or he can go after Leon Edwards for his 170 pound um, championship. So, um, that was, uh, pretty good, um, so, uh, kudos to Islam Makachev, and I can't wait to see who he's going to challenge next. I got a feeling that he's going to challenge Leon Edwards for his 170 pound, um, championship and become a two belt champion to a division champion um so i can't wait to see what happens next something big is going to happen before the end of the year or beginning of 2025 so um the co-main event uh sean strickland versus paulo costa that one was kind of a boring fight that did go the entire five rounds yes it was five rounds for a non-title fight um, I guess I decided on that. Um, you would think that this fight would have a lot of like fireworks because Paolo Costa has a lot of power. Um, those those leg kicks and Sean Strickland is just like a Terminator robot just coming straight at you, and he has this weird stance coming at you, which pretty much emphasizes any leg kicks, any leg checks that will make you wish that you didn't kick the guy. So at one point, um, Paulo Costa threw a kick and because of the leg check, uh, it made Paulo Costa in a lot of pain. And he was wobbly for at least a couple of minutes before he got his uh, strength back in his uh, his foot, his leg. 
by Sean Strickland was pretty much pretty much just pelted him with punches and it got to the end of the fight and that's where he not only did a head kick did a jump kick a running jump kick so he ends up you know it does kick in the face of Paulo Costa a couple of times before time ran out but honestly um uh at least that ending sequence was the fun part, but overall, for 25 minutes, it was kind of boring, I got to say. But Sean Strickland won my split decision because one of the judges called it for Costa 49-46, but the other two called it 50-45, 49-46 for Sean Strickland. So they don't like that one judge who called it for Costa. Might be a little corrupt in some ways. But I still think it's legit. Um, but yeah, that was that was pretty cool though. Um, uh, what else we do have? Um, so Sean Strickland might actually end up getting a title shot next after. Is the Israel Desanya does fight Drakus Duplessis for the middleweight championship? Um, so, but then there is another dark horse to that middleweight championship race. You have Chemayev fighting Robert Whitaker. It's happening on June twenty second on ABC. So. Now that Sean Strickland won his fight, and whoever wins between Whitaker and Chemayev, they have a right to challenge for the middleweight championship. Whoever is holding it between Israel Adesanya and um, Chemayev. So, uh, next fight, interesting fight: Kevin Holland versus Mikhail uh, Oleksik, and. Um, well, um, Oleksik actually ends up knocking down Kevin Holland, but as he was doing that, Kevin Holland locked in an arm bar in defense, and the referee had to call the fight and called it a technical submission because Kevin Holland actually broke the arm of Oleksik. And um, even though Electric did not tap out, but he did not want to tap out no matter what the circumstances were, which is crazy. But when you see an arm already broken, supposedly broken, uh, referee in his right mind has to call that fight because uh, he wasn't going to get out of it. So. Uh, kudos on the submission victory for Kevin Holland and bounce back in the win column. So that was something. Um, next, I think we had uh, what was it? Um, Let's see. I think it was Alex Morono going up against Nico Price. That one was a decent fight back and forth, but Nico Price ends up with the uh, decision victory over Morono. Um, and then I think we had Randy Brown versus Zalski Dos Santos. That one went to this decision as well Randy Brown with the victory so that fight wasn't too bad now there was a heavyweight fight on the prelims it wasn't the feature prelim but it was I think the one before the feature prelim you got Almeida uh, Jolton Almeida going up against uh, Romanov both were like undefeated rising heavyweights in the UFC division. 
but then Romanov ends up losing like the last three fights now ever since he started um, he got that first loss and then Joshua Almeida was actually on his way to number one contendership for the heavyweight championship but before he could have faced Tom Aspinall and or Bones John Bones Jones apparently um, he was supposed to beat Curtis Blades, but Curtis Blades, well, he was taken down quite a bit in that fight with Dr. Almeida, and the only thing that he could do was the next time that Almeida was going to go for the takedown, the head of Almeida was exposed, which gave Curtis Blades his only move. He kept elbowing the head of Almeida, and it became a TKO. And that was the black mark on Almeida's uh, fight record. So Almeida went back to the drawing board, and he came back and he submitted Romanov in this heavyweight fight. So Almeida's back on the win streak. Uh, back on the winning side and make his way back into the top five, top three at heavyweight and eventually fight Tom Aspinall or John Bones Jones. Um, today is actually game two of the NBA Finals 2024. Boston Celtics with Christos Porzingis. He helped blow out the Dallas Mavericks. At Boston Celtics are up one game to zero in this best of seven series. Um, but, uh, um, um, So, what I think should happen is that Boston Celtics, they utilize the big man. He was shooting threes, he was blocking, and Dallas Mavericks with an injured Luka Doncic kind of got separation from the Mavericks, but the Mavericks down by not 29, finally kind of got it down to 8 points, but couldn't make it any closer and the Celtics ends up on another run which is kind of related to how they separated from the Dallas Mavericks in the first place but um, Luka it just seems like he's nursing an injury because he looks a little bit slower than usual um, so that was pretty interesting though uh, so, um, I do hope that Kyrie and Luca can still play together for game two, try to figure out how to neutralize Porzingis and Jalen Brown. I did notice that uh, Jason Tatum wasn't much of a factor in game one, but it looks like it is Jalen Brown's team, and he's getting paid like it, actually. Um, there's just a lot of, like, just the blocking and the, uh, um, Just the long three pointers from a big man. It was just almost impossible to guard him because he was making them. And then Luca and the Mavericks, they just couldn't really knock down their shots because they just simply couldn't keep up anymore. And the fact that both teams were a little bit off for a while, but I don't think that works well for the Dallas Mavericks. The well rested team was the, uh, the Boston Celtics who ends up taking advantage of all the miscues from the Mavericks and ends up pulling away and ends up winning game one 107 to 89. 
So game two tonight at 5.30, I believe, and Dallas will try to steal one before both teams head back to Dallas, Texas for games three and four. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it's quite interesting NBA Finals, and I hope this series goes six, seven games. Hopefully the Mavericks can win it. But I can also see it where the uh, Boston Celtics could actually finish this in four or five games if Dallas can't figure things out. And I think Luka might have to pull out early because he's nursing some injuries. So he might save himself for games three and four and try to tie the series going back to uh, by the end of the Dallas trip. So we'll see what happens. Um, the Stanley Cup Finals 2024 started today, or yeah, started yesterday. Uh, the Florida Panthers did defeat the uh, Edmonton Oilers to take game one. Um, Panthers are up one game to zero in the best of seven. So game two is on Monday. I'm hoping the Florida Panthers do win it over the Edmonton Oilers. I don't want the Oilers to win. So. Both are really battle tested, honestly. Really fun series. Um, we do have the single Padres. They are still turning on the switch and turning off the switch. Um, pitching has been kind of brutal sometimes because despite the fact that, you know, the Padres look really good against really good teams, but can still play bad against bad teams. And despite the fact that the Padres are losing at home a lot more than they are, than they should be. They am going to the game on Tuesday against the Athletics, Oakland Athletics. This is their last season as Oakland Athletics because they're going to go to move to Sacramento 2025, become the Sacramento Athletics before their new stadium is built in Las Vegas to become the Las Vegas Athletics. Wow. We'll see what happens with that. Padres, um, I think they're playing the Diamondbacks right now, and I think today is the end of the four-game series with the Diamondbacks. And then they introduce the Oakland Athletics to town starting tomorrow. So, um, But honestly, I feel that the NL West is getting beat up by a lot of teams. The Dodgers don't look as great, but they are beating the New York Yankees. Um, but the NL West doesn't look too promising, honestly. So hopefully things will change in the next couple months. Well, guys, um, that's it for me on boxing, UFC, NHL playoffs, NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup Finals, NBA Finals, and Padres Baseball. Thank you guys for listening to episode 178, part 1 and 2. I will talk to you guys more about comedy shows on episode 179. Tell you more about more food stuff and more sports stuff. So stay tuned, guys. Thank you for listening. Remember to have some good food, good company, watch some good comedy, and watch some good action. And I'll talk to you guys later. Boom! Tiggy Maximus signing off, baby. There, guys.